Mason Greenwood will be continuing his career away from Manchester United. In a statement on the 21st of August, the club confirmed the conclusion of an internal investigation and the decision that Greenwood, who was arrested in January 2022 and has not played since, should continue his career away from Old Trafford. It represents a startling U-turn at the end of a process which has drawn the ire of supporters, employees and even members of the British government. As of Wednesday the 16th of August, Manchester United's plan had been to bring Mason Greenwood back. The following Thursday and Friday morning, club executives devoted time to justifying their chosen path to employees angry at the prospect. The club's sentiment trackers, which monitor supporter feeling online, began to plummet. On that Friday, The Athletic reported that the club's preparations for Greenwood's return also included the likely response of external figures, listing pundits, journalists and politicians, and stating whether they would be for or against Greenwood's reintegration. The planning divided these people into categories – supportive, open-minded or hostile – with the club's document listing a series of domestic abuse charities assumed to be hostile. By Friday late afternoon, in response to the reporting, a backlash across season ticket holders, fans, supporters groups, members of parliament and even charities that support female victims of abuse had combined to force a rethink. That same evening, United's most senior decision makers engaged in crisis meetings. They debated whether to loan out or sell Greenwood or attempt to cut ties altogether, though this would present legal challenges given the club did not consider, following the findings of an internal investigation, that they have grounds to terminate his contract. In the end, the club confirmed on Monday that they would work with the player to continue his career elsewhere. And many people will wonder if United's final decision had been based on the public backlash or because they came to reflect that the initial decision communicated by Richard Arnold, the club's CEO, to the executive leadership was misguided. Arnold acknowledged his view evolved as the process progressed and claimed that he was taking various factors and views into account right up until the point of finalising my decision. Greenwood was arrested on January the 30th, 2022, after graphic audio and images emerged on social media. He's not played for United since, but remains under contract until 2025, with the club having the option to extend his deal, worth around £75,000 a week, for a further year. United have continued to pay Greenwood since his arrest. Last October, the player was charged with attempted rape, controlling and coercive behaviour, and assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Greenwood denied all the charges and they were dropped in February, with the Crown Prosecution Service saying that a combination of the withdrawal of key witnesses and new material meant that there was no longer a realistic prospect of conviction. After the criminal case ended, United stated that the club would conduct its own process before determining next steps. The United process was led by Chief Executive Arnold. Assisted by a panel headed up by the club's legal counsel, Patrick Stewart, Communications Chief Ellie Norman, Football Director John Murta and the Chief Operating Officer Colette Roche. Following this investigation, United's view became that Greenwood should return. The club also say they received explanations for the audio and video that were posted online and say that they're satisfied that Greenwood did not physically abuse the complainant. At 9am on Wednesday, August the 16th, The Athletic wrote to United to inform the club of the intention to report that Arnold had told the club's executive leadership in the first week of August that United intended to bring Greenwood back. It was also put to United that Arnold had intended to record a video to explain the decision and that head coach Eric Ten Hag and football director John Murta were both supportive of Greenwood's return. In response, United sent out an all-staff email, a statement on their club website and messaged the same comment to The Athletic. They insisted that a decision had not yet been made, but also appeared to set the scene for a return by referring to the club's responsibilities to Mason as an employee, as a young person who's been with the club since the age of seven, and as a new father with a partner. United also say they understand the strong opinions it's provoked based on the partial evidence in the public domain. United's unusual response appeared to illustrate the panic that had enveloped the club's decision makers. They'd been modelling plans for Greenwood's return for quite some time. The document had been revised more than a dozen times, and the response from United revealed a club attempting to seize the narrative. 
some employees felt appalled by the club's plans around Greenwood and United executives held multiple intense meetings with staff. Some discussed resigning, others researched how to strike. When The Athletic reported on those considering a strike, multiple employees contacted the publication discreetly to say they would also join if one materialised. The crisis meetings involved United executives seeking to justify a return for Greenwood to the staff, while also claiming no final decision had been made, which reiterates how determined United's executive had become to see through the plan. At that stage, United would only tell the Athletic and staff that the evidence available to the public was partial and did not explain the reasons cited above for why they wished to bring the player back. During an executive leadership meeting on August the 1st, Richard Arnold laid out a plan for an announcement on August the 4th. The 3rd and 4th of August were also penciled in as dates on which to inform key stakeholders. One problem, however, was that the key members of United's women's team remained in Australia competing at the World Cup. United insist their plan was never to delegate the decision-making to their female players. Rather, they wished to give the team prior notice and the opportunity for feedback. The women's team did include players who were fiercely opposed to Greenwood's return, but that sentiment was not overwhelming. Some female players worried about their long-term prospects at the club if they kicked up too much of a fuss. Nevertheless, after The Guardian reported on the 11th of August that a decision had been delayed to consult World Cup players, United's female players found themselves the victims of social media abuse. Also on the 11th of August, a new account appeared on Twitter. Female fans against Greenwood's return. This group of Manchester United supporters told The Athletic they were preparing a series of protests against Greenwood's proposed reintegration. The fans, who were all regular matchgoers, made their feelings clear outside Old Trafford before United's opening game of the season against Wolves. A banner read, Female fans demand no Greenwood return, end violence against women. United's plan to bring Greenwood back, though, remained intact, and dates before September's international break were penciled in for the announcement. On Thursday, August the 17th, the charity Women's Aid wrote directly to Manchester United to express their concerns. They received a phone call from the club on Friday lunchtime, with both sides feeling the conversation was constructive. Hours later, however, The Athletic reported further details which confirmed the extent of the club's planning around Greenwood's return. These included the severity of internal dissent, that a series of domestic abuse charities were assumed to be hostile to the decision, and how the club's internal process had not engaged with any charities specialised in violence against women. Women's Aid condemned United publicly on social media. By now, British members of Parliament were also lining up to criticise United. And on the evening of the 18th of August, United's most senior decision-makers held their crisis meeting, ultimately deciding that the plan to reintegrate Greenwood could no longer proceed. Essentially, United had been pulled away from a decision that they appeared to want to make.